Hi, I'm here with Frank Legato. Frank is the editor of a Global Gaming Business Magazine, which is the largest trade publication for the gaming industry. He writes about slot machines, he writes about the casino industry in general. And Frank also, he has a book, How to Win Millions Playing Slot Machines or Lose Trying. And, and Frank's written about slot machines for how many years now? Uh, 26. Wow, 26 years. And you know everything there is to know about slot machines, yes? Except how to win on them, yes. <laughs> well, that's funny because I, I have a list of questions for you here. And number one is what is the secret to winning on a slot machine? It's dumb. Uh, winning on a slot machine is dumb luck. I mean, you can't guarantee yourself that you're going to win on a slot machine. You, nobody can guarantee you a win. Uh, the best you can do is minimize your uh, chances of losing. And the way you do that is uh, by uh, choosing the best games to play and choosing uh, uh, your bankroll accordingly, bankrolling your game accordingly. In other words, the best games to play uh, are the, uh, um, if your main goal is to win money, uh, you're probably best going with more traditional style games which have a lower household or a higher payback percentage. Um, higher payback percentage means the house edge is lower. That's what it translates into. So if you can play a higher end game, a dollar game or higher, have the highest return overall. And uh, um, play them with a sufficient bankroll. And I'm talking for a dollar game, at least a couple of hundred dollars. Um, that gives you a better chance to, to wait out that 2% house edge. And when you do win, you're going to win a lot bigger. Okay, well, let's go to the basics. So when you walk up to a slot machine, what's going on inside that machine? What's going on inside that machine is that there's uh, a computer program into which numbers have been entered for each possible symbol that can come up on a reel and for a blank that can come on a reel. They all have a number assigned to them. And then there's duplication. The lower paying symbols, the blanks, have more numbers assigned to them, you know, uh, to, the same, to the same positions. The jackpot symbols have a couple, of, you know, one or two numbers assigned to them. What the, and what's going on when you walk up to a slot machine is a random number generator program is generating all the numbers that have been entered into that program in a random sequence. 100 numbers a second. It's generating 100 numbers a second. So when you put money in, it's still generating those numbers until you hit the spin button or pull the handle. Uh, and at that instant you do that, you push the spin button, the computer freezes the sequence of numbers that it has, that the RNG has generated at that instant and translates it into your real result. Tells the reels where to stop if, if you're talking about a traditional game. Or, you know, or tells the video screen what to display. And it all happens in a fraction of a second. So that's what's happening when you walk up. It's generating those numbers at 100 numbers a second. Uh, and when you sit down, you're just, you, it's, it, your timing of when you push the button will determine what reels, what real results you get. Okay, so if you push it at the right time, you'll get a winner. If you push it at the wrong time, you'll get a loser. Yes, in other words, it's, it's, it's luck. I mean, you can't determine what the right time is. There's no way to determine when that random number generator is going to come up with that great combination. Of numbers. All right, now, now people always uh, hear about Loose machines or tight machines, people refer to a casino, oh, this casino has loose machines, oh, this casino has tight machines. Now, is there any truth to that? Yes, there is. I mean, uh, magazines like a Casino Player have logged it for years, and uh, the casinos re are generally, commercial casinos are re required to report their hold numbers to, um, to, a, uh, uh, to whatever regulatory authority is there. And... Um, those hold numbers report how much of wagers on slot machines were held by the casino as earnings. But if you flip-flop those numbers, that's a public record of the payback percentage of how much of the slot wagers have been given back to, to players in jackpots. Um, and those numbers can be logged and, and looked at. And you know what magazines like Casino Player and Strictly Slots do is they take those numbers and compare them between casinos and between casino jurisdictions. So you can see by historical record which casinos have given more back to their players than others. 
and you know, generally what you're going to find is those casinos are in uh, North Las Vegas, northern, the northern suburbs of Las Vegas, the western suburbs, just the, the outskirts of Las Vegas, the locals' casinos. Is a slot machine ever due to hit? Uh, it's impossible to know. It's impossible to know when a... No, it's never due to hit because every spin is independent of every other spin as far as what it's going to do. Don't forget that the, the RNG is generating numbers at 100 times a second, 100 numbers a second, uh, uh, every, and, and it's constantly generating those numbers. So there's no way of determining what number it's going to hit. Uh, on, on a classic slot machine, you might, uh, you know, you, there's only a very small, you know, number. There might be eight paying combinations. There might be, you know, maybe a hundred real stops, physical real stops. In other words, physical spaces that can stop on that, on that single pay line. Um, so there's really, it can cycle through the entire possibility of, of uh, real results, the entire possibility of jackpots or, or losing spins can cycle through a couple of times between the time you hit the uh, button once and the, time, the next time you hit the button. So there's really no way of determining when a slot machine is due. It can, it can, a slot machine can, you know, can hit jackpots ten times in a row and not hit jackpots for another, you know, for another week. Okay, so another question along the same lines. There are some players who say, well, this machine hasn't hit for a while. It's due to hit. And then there's people with just the opposite theory and say, well, this machine's been hitting for a while, so it's a good machine to play because it's going to continue to hit. So e either one of those are valid or invalid. What would you say? There's really no way to determine whether a machine is going to hit on the next spin or not, regardless of what it's done in the past. Past uh, results are no indication of what the future is going to hold for any slot machine. If a casino wants to change the payback percentage on a machine, they, they can do that. And what is the procedure if they wanted to do something like that? Well, it, yes, they, it's perfectly legal to change a percentage. And, uh, you know, the procedure right now in 99.9% uh, .9 of the casinos out there uh, is they have to buy a new chip. And they have to have technicians go out, open the door, take out one EEPROM chip. It looks like a little brush. Put in another one and close the door and have a regulator there generally to verify the new payback percentage. Um, that's the way it's done now. Now with server-based gaming coming in uh, in a few years, they can do that. They can change a game program remotely. But generally, you know, they, they have to still tell the regulators ahead of time when the program is going to change, you know. Uh, and generally what they're doing with the, the, the initial applications out there is not changing a percentage on the same machine. What they're doing is they're changing game styles. You know, they're changing denominations. They're changing from pennies to nickels, from, from pennies to quarters. You know, they're completely changing the game that's in the same box. And that's what they're doing remotely. Um, the payback percentages, the, the rules in place now say that you can't change it while somebody's playing. You, you have to wait until the machine has been idle for, for, for several minutes to change anything on it. And now, how, how widespread is uh, server-based gaming at this point? It's still in the experimental stages. It's still just being tried on a few banks of machines here and there at various casinos. I just, uh, you know, I did just uh, moderated a couple of panels on it, as a matter of fact. And what's happening now is they are, the casinos and the manufacturers are working on uh, new applications for the system. And what they need to do with the applications is... Uh, provide something for players that they don't have now and something that players will enjoy. In other words, if these systems don't allow casinos to make more money, you know, uh, if the casino, if these systems don't drop more players in and allow incremental revenue, then, you know, they're just a convenience for the operator and they're, you know, they're not going to, and there's a big investment involved. They have to have an Ethernet equipped floor. These are basically they're setting up a local area network, a computer network, for their slot floor. And especially older casinos have to completely tear out their casino floor and equip it for, for Ethernet. That's a big investment you're talking. 
So you're talking big investments here, and if there's not a big return on investment, it's just not worth it. And the way you get a big return on investment is providing players a uh, play experience that they don't have with, with standard slot machines. If you had to give an estimate of how widespread you think uh, server-based gaming is right now, what percent of the casinos in the United States have it? What would be your best guesstimate? Fraction of 1%. Not even a fraction of 1%. I mean, it's very small. And, the, and a lot of the casinos, and the, at least in North America, the vast majority of the casinos that do have it are just having it on a bank or two, and they're trying it out, and they're seeing what kind of applications they can do. Uh, they can customize play experiences for players. In other words, if a high-end player comes in, uh, they, can, uh, they can, as soon as he puts his Players Club card in, his favorite five games will appear on the screen, you know, and he can choose from that menu. That's that's one that's one way. Uh, um, it's providing more value to players. Uh, I had one lady who told me that she, her father was in the gaming business. He was a slot manager, and he had a little clicker in his pocket, and he could go around and click it and change the payback percentage on the slot machine. Now you said before that that couldn't happen. You know, it, if it's, if it, you, have to, you have to open the door. And it won't happen with server-based gaming either because you have to uh, actually uh, provide regulators with, it, with, a, uh, with a schedule of when you're going to change your payback percentage so they can look on their computer screens and make sure the new payback percentage is what you say it is. So you can't just go around and you have the rule that you can't change percentage. You can't change anything on a game while somebody's playing. So all those rules are against it, and I go back to the, to the gaming license. Why, do, why would a casino risk, risk its gaming license? Okay, just one last question for you. What is your best advice for slot players? Uh, bankroll for the game that you're going to play. In other words, you have to make sure you have enough to ride out that house edge that's on a slot machine. Uh, if, you know, if you sit down at a, at a dollar machine with, with a 20, uh, you, know, you have to be extremely lucky. I mean, you know, we're extremely lucky to, to actually play that slot machine for a while. Hey, you know, and it happens. You can make, I've, you can, I've thrown a 20 into a dollar machine and hit on the first round, and then you play for a while. But, you know, really, you have to really know how that machine is going to behave. Uh, a, a traditional slot machine is going to have uh, uh, dry spells punctuated by big wins. So you plan for that eventuality. If you want to play, if you're, if, if you're in it for entertainment, you can sit down at a multi-line penny machine and uh, you, you can play for a long time on a small investment, you know. So sit down with, with, with $20. But no, in the end, you're probably still gonna, going to uh, lose. But know that going in, you know, uh, you'll, you'll be entertained. And those people are playing for the entertainment of it. They already know that penny machines pay the lowest on the floor. They pay usually, you know, you, usually you're giving away more like 12 or 13% on a penny machine as opposed to, you know, 10 or 9 or on a dollar machine maybe only 2 or 3. So, you know, basically uh, know what, how your machine is going to behave and bankroll accordingly. That's my best. All right, sounds like good advice. Now, if people want to find out more about you or your book, where can they do that? Well, the book is available on Amazon. Uh, it, it was written in, in 03, so it's already kind of outdated. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, um, you can go to our website, uh, uh, ggbmagazine.com. Uh, our magazine is always up on there, and it's a very good source of information for the gaming industry. Okay, thank you. Frank Legato, thank you very much for spending time with us today. Thank you.